To a Connoisseur at First Glance, this collection of furniture by Paolo Guidi has an immediate impact and appeal. We ask the question why the pieces speak to us and from whence they derive their beauty. On closer inspection, we begin to understand the context which form the masterpieces. They do not merely extend the tradition of the great cabinet makers of the past, but develop the realm of furniture as an art form. The pieces were made in um, 1990 to 1991, it took a year to make them, and they were designed in 1987 Why? Interesting question. Um, they were dream images. They were in response to apocalyptic anxieties, wars, famines, diseases, natural and man-made disasters. And in a dream, I had an image of three forms of enlightenment that came to mankind and that seemed to solve some of these problems. Um, the dream symbols were very um, numinous and I wanted to capture them into materials. The winged lion is uh, what the animal forms in alchemy are symbolic of men, winged forms are spirit, so it's the spirit of man. The outer border of stars in gold and silver represent the firmament or the heavens and is just uh, an icon to put man in his place in, in, in the natural world. The winged Korean sun is the ultimate godhead from which comes down all the enlightenment. In um, a more um, abstract way of thinking, one can think of this sort of symbolic thought as a deintegrate between one's personal self and the larger self which is represents the universe. The theory of crystals is an energizing um, crystal um, to excite, stimulate, en energize one. And um, I used it here to separate um, the obelisk from the man plinth. I don't think really the two should ever touch. It's a bit like an insulation. Symbols of eternity, the perfect cir circle, but also symbols of the self. And the star is an enlight a symbol of enlightenment, one of the earliest symbols of enlightenment. The feet were pure whimsy, and I wanted a decorative element that took away a little bit from the gravitas and linked it also. I didn't want something sort of square and squat, I wanted it to move out. The cabinet of opposites is an obelisk. The shape is taken from the shape of a sunbeam coming from the solar disk to Earth. It is a symbol of enlightenment. This obelisk is studded with stars, holding the paradox of day and night, sunshine and nighttime together. The drawers are in 12 in number, 4 times 3, um, the number of months in the year. And also, they act as containers. The inside is black, phonic, and studded with silver stars. So it's an, a representation of femininity to balance the phallic aspect of the obelisk itself. The prism in the apex of the crystal, uh, which represents um, spirit and ether. And it forms a crystal pyramid within the structure. Sun and moon, when they come together, create the double-bodied, single-headed lion from whose mouth spouts the dissolving stream in which the two elements can combine. So that is held at the back of the doors, and you split it as you open the cabinet. It can only really be seen in the imagination. These are the um, four symbols for the development of the star perfection. Once it's formed, it hovers in the state between darkness and light um, as an open star. I wanted to bring um, a paradox. The obelisk is about, its, its shape is taken from the 
shape of a sunbeam coming from the solar disk. And I wanted to bring the paradox of night and day into that, so I studied a sunbeam with stars, so bringing night and day onto the same surface. The cabinet of the rebirth of spirit and ideas. The symbolism here is quite complex. Again, we've brought the tension between the opposites in the cabinet and on the man plinth, the, the sun and moon are in conjunction, giving rise to the twin snakes of Mercurius, or Hermes. The obelisk is about the enlightenment that comes from the rebirth of spirit and ideas, as characterized by the symbol of the phoenix, the bird that knew when the time was right, gathered a power of scented woods, and focused the sun's rays, i.e. enlightenment, onto its power, and burnt itself, the internal aspects of the cabinet. The maze represents a search, um, the grail symbol. The staircase represents uh, the transition between one state and another, as in Jacob's Ladder. The screen of columns is rather like the portal through which one must pass to the new world and new life. And the clock holds all the alchemical works, from the small work to the major work, wherein the um, processes of conjunction and separation, uh, sublimation, are taken for their completion and result in the rebirth as, as symbolized by the phoenix. The sun and moon chair is the sun and moon in conjunction. This is the second conjunction and is the interim period or the interim stage between the cabinet of opposites and the bureau bookcase. The green lion devours the sun. They're both self symbols, one of spirit, one of man. It corresponds to the state of melancholia. And the green lion says, I contain within me, or I know within me, all the secrets that the philosophers seek. I wanted to use um, the Earth's riches, basically the woods and metals, minerals. The woods are, are, are varied, but the predominant wood is Amboina. It's a rare um, wood, it's a rare tumor within the wood, and we only use the state-managed plantation trees uh, for green reasons. The carving has been done by a farm, gentleman farmer in Norfolk who did the carvings between the winter and spring sowings. With the silver is again the work of several workmen, um, engineers who made the hinges, locks and mechanisms, um, a jeweler who made the stars, and a, ma a master engraver, a gold medal winner, who in fact did all the engraving. I used alchemy because um, alchemy grew with the development of Western civilization from its very origins. The first use of the star as a symbol of enlightenment can be traced back to Earth. Well, I have used the symbols of alchemy. Um, they are symbols um, which enable one to explore very diverse and difficult areas of metaphysic. The False alchemists searched for real gold. The true alchemists searched for the um, Aram Verde, the green living gold, um, which was the panacea, the cure for human ills. The idea of finding um, our inner gold, I think, relates to these three forms of enlightenment. The enlightenment that comes from the bringing together and valuing of opposites, from the separation and valuing of the two forms of thought the directive and the intuitive.